Hey, I hope everyone is doing great and I'm very excited to be here with you. This time, we're going to talk about a handy function in Arduino called the map function. Now, dedicating a whole lesson to one particular built-in function isn't something that I usually do. But the map function is really neat and you'll often pair it with analog read. Plus, we're going to be using it in lessons coming up in the future. As the name may suggest to you, the map function maps one range of numbers to another. So what do we mean by a range of numbers anyway? Well, a range of numbers could be something like 1 to 100, or the average rainfall in the Amazon basin, which the internet tells me is from 60 to 120 inches of rain per year. Another range you'll often work with in the world of Arduino is a range from 0 to 1,023. This range comes up time and time again because it's the range of numbers that the analog read function can return. All right. So why would we want to map one set of numbers, or range of numbers, to another? Well, we know that analog read can return any number from 0 to 1023. So let's say we have a temperature sensor hooked to the Arduino, and a servo motor also connected to it. And, you know, for some weird reason, we want the motor's speed to be proportional to the temperature. In other words, the hotter it gets, the faster the motor will spin. Well. The problem here is that the PWM pins that drive the motor can only handle values from 0 to 255, while analog read will be throwing values from 0 to 1023 out there. This is the kind of thing that makes the map function handy. Using it, we can map the values from 0 to 1023 to the values from 0 to 255 proportionally so the PWM pins can work with the data. Let's take a closer look at the function to see what I mean. To use map, we actually need to pass it five arguments. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's really simple to understand. It takes the value to be mapped, which we can think of as raw data coming in from analog read, because we have a sensor hooked to the board and we're using analog read to read a value from the sensor. We have the old low and old high, which in the case of analog read would be from zero for the old low and 1023 for the old high. And we have the new low and new high, which are the numbers we want to use, and maybe something like 0 to 255 if we're driving that servo we talked about. Let's slide a little further down the rabbit hole with a more realistic example. Say we have our temperature sensor, and as before, we're using analog read to get values from it. We want to drive a fan this time, but we only have four speeds. So if analog read gives us a value of 0 to 255, it's cold enough, and we don't need to run the fan, so it stays off. If we get a value from 256 to 511, then it's slightly warm, and we want the fan on low. If analog read gives us 512 to 767, it's warmer, so we want the fan on medium. And finally, if our raw data from analog read is higher than 768, or 768 or more, it's like really hot, so we want the fan to run on maximum speed. So we can use map, to map the values analog read will return, which will be from 0 to 1023, to our new values from 0 to 4. So, what map will do is take our previous low, high, and everything in between, and proportionally map it to some new value within our new range. So, in our example, if analog read returned any value less than 256, it'll be mapped to the new value of 0. Alright, this sounds really good and handy but there is one small gotcha that comes with using the map function. Notice how the last value of 1023 in our old range maps to 4. It turns out that this is the only value that will map to 4. In other words, the value 768 to 1022 will map to 3, and only 1023 will map to 4, no other numbers. And I know this sounds a bit strange, but it's just how the map function works, so keep this in mind when using it. As a general rule, the old high always maps directly to the new high. So, for example, if the old high were, say, 10,000, and the new high was 100, the only number that would map to 100 would be 10,000. And this is just the way the algorithm works. And I'll throw a link down there to the Arduino reference where you can see the surprisingly short algo behind map. And algo is short for algorithm, by the way. Now, another important point to note is that map works with integer math only. As you may know, an integer is just a whole number that can be positive, negative, or zero. So map doesn't work with fractions, 
and the algorithm will actually truncate or simply throw away any remainder or fractional part. But the cool thing is that you can use it on any range of whole numbers. So for example, I can map 1 to 50 to say 50 to negative 100. I can even use it to reverse a range of numbers like moving 1 to 50 to 50 to 1 because the lower bounds of either range may be larger or smaller than the upper bounds. All right, so now that we've eaten some healthy theory, let's build a simple circuit, dive into the IDE, and have some code for dessert. We're going to demonstrate the map function by hooking a pot to the Arduino and using map with the serial monitor to see it in action as we vary the position of the potentiometer. And again, by pot, I'm not talking about something that may be illegal. Pot is short for potentiometer, which is just a variable resistor. We'll talk more about pots later, but for now, here's a circuit. So the circuit's really, really simple. We just have our potentiometer, the center pin connected to pin A0, and then one side at 5 volts, the other side at ground. So that's all there is to it, guys. Let's code. 